Angie Bray. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to address the House for the first time and to take part in what is turning out to be a fascinating debate this afternoon with some excellent contributions. And I would like to congratulate uh, the Honourable Member for Rutherglen and Hamilton West on an excellent and heartfelt maiden speech. I'd like to start by paying tribute to some of my predecessors. Ealing Central and Acton is a new seat, and for the past five years it has been well represented by the now Honourable Member for Hammersmith, who drew on many years of local government experience and his legal background to offer wise advice and counsel. Now it's true we did lock horns on occasions, but on at least two I do recall that we were on the same side. The first was in imposing the infamous West London tram, and the second more recently has been in opposing any further expansion at Heathrow Airport. And I would like to say how much I respect the fact that he put his principles before career when he stood down from his government position in order to pursue that campaign. And um, I hope he's as pleased as I am with the early announcement by the new coalition government that there will be no third runway at Heathrow, and it does seem that the British Airports Authority has finally got the message as well. I would also like to mention the Honourable Member for Ealing North, who I have got to know rather well over the last year or so. His boundaries were changed alongside mine, and as he put it to me rather graphically, he said, well, you got your best bits from me, and I got my best bits from you. So thank you for that. I, de I know I don't need to tell the House what a, a larger-than-life character he is, and he is, of course, um, much loved for his work here in the House and also for his commitment to his constituents. And I would just like to say that I hope that in years to come I shall be able to go about my job with the same good humour that he goes about his. Yeah. Yeah. But the person I see as my closest predecessor is, of course, the Right Honourable Member for North West Hampshire. He represented the old Ealing Acton seat for 23 years, and regardless of people's political allegiance, he is quite simply remembered with warmth and affection wherever he goes right across the constituency. He was, of course, the first famous bicycling politician. He was the bicycling Bart. And we have many photographs still in Ealing of him with his bicycle, and I have to tell you, his bicycle clips as well. So he has deservedly got a towering reputation uh, back in Ealing and Acton. He's always welcome there. And I'm very aware that I have large shoes to fill, uh, literally in his case, as well as metaphorically. Ealing Central and Acton is one of the most diverse constituencies you can possibly imagine. And I think that the boundary changes have actually deepened that diversity. It is truly a rich tapestry. We have a Polish, a long-standing Polish community, an Asian community, an Arab community, a Japanese community, an African community, including a growing Somali community. And at this point, I would just like to mention the brilliant work done by the Tallis Centre in South Acton, which operates on very little funding, and they work to ease the path of Somalis coming to this country into our community. When I called in there recently during the, the campaign, I found two of the staff there embarking on their new campaign, uh, a campaign against female circumcision within the Somali community. And I have to say, I think that is a useful reminder to us all, perhaps, that not everyone who comes here to live a better life is always able to leave behind them all their torment. But it is work done by organisations like the Talent Centre that I shall look forward to supporting with all my heart as the local MP. Both Ealing and Acton have long histories. Acton was originally a Saxon village, and the name comes from the word meaning oak tree. It was transformed by the Industrial Revolution and developed quickly a rather large uh, reputation for its washing and laundry industry. In fact, some of the names across Acton still reflect that history, Bolo Lane, for instance. And Ealing too has, of course, an illustrious history. Its icon is an oak tree, which links neatly with Acton, but also, I suspect, represents the famous oak trees on Ealing Common and across so many of our other wonderful green spaces of which we are truly very proud. Ealing has for long years been known as the Queen of the Suburbs 
And if any here would like to take a stroll with me through some of the streets, you'll see just exactly why it still is. The earliest surviving census in this country come through Ealing in 1599. It was chosen as the place of residence in 1815 by John Quincy Adams when he came to this country to serve as the American minister. In 1901, Ealing adopted a coat of arms and a motto. And the motto was, Respice prospice, which means literally, look backwards, look forwards. And I have to say, I think that the good voters of Ealing uh, and Acton may have taken that rather literally when it transpired on election night that they had voted for me as the MP, but also for a Labour council. But I'll leave others to decide which is which. <laughs> But there can be no discussion of Ealing without mention of the famous film studios, the longest continuously working film studios in the world. Uh, they bring great lustre to the borough and have played a significant role in putting the UK at the heart of the international film industry. Who can possibly not have heard of such titles as The Lavender Hill Mob, Passport to Pimlico, yeah. Hue and Cry, yeah. and they're just about to do a remake of the Doctor at Large series. On a more serious note, it is going to be imperative to keep all of this history in mind, I think, when considering plans to regenerate both Ealing and Acton Town Centres. For regenerated, I believe they must be if they are to stride confidently through the 21st century. Crossrail will help, but I, th I think development there has to be, but it has to be done sensitively in order not to trample on all that uh, history and the character of the place. I shall hope to work closely with the local council and other agencies to ensure that we get things as right as we possibly can. I look forward to continuing some of the campaigns I started as a candidate. I have a, a local transport committee which meets regularly to look at issues around Ealing Broadway and Acton mainline stations. And I shall continue to campaign for as long as it takes to ensure that we keep our A&E departments at both Central Middlesex and Ealing hospitals. Mr Deputy Speaker, there is much in what we are discussing this afternoon for me to recommend to my constituents. Protecting the environment for future generations and finding ways to make our economy more environmentally sustainable are things that I know the people of Ealing and Acton care passionately about and that I can support. And I would just like to put on record at this stage that I am proud of the Conservative record in terms of environmental matters it was after a Conservative government that introduced the Clean, Air, the Clean Air Act, which did so much to get rid of the smog in London. It was a Conservative government that introduced tax incentives to ensure people switched to lead-free petrol. And it was a Conservative council that pioneered the low emission zone, namely Westminster City Council. And it was a Conservative Prime Minister, Lady Thatcher, who probably was the first Prime Minister to choose to make a major speech on the environment in the late 1980s. And she reminded us in that speech that we are not freeholders on this planet. We are leaseholders. And, we, and our duty is to ensure, like all good leaseholders, that we pass on this planet to future generations in the same, if not better, order than that that we found it. But the issue that I just wanted to touch on, which comes within the DEFRA remit, is that of dangerous dogs. It is an issue that has become of an increasing problem across Ealing and Acton. I was delighted to see that the, the coalition uh, agreement went into some detail about wanting to tackle this issue. I'm a little disappointed it isn't an immediate priority, or, although I hope it will be, and I'm sure it will need to be. We certainly have problems across the parks, right across Ealing and Acton, and I do think it's unacceptable that in this day and age people cannot enjoy their wonderful green spaces because of the blight that these dangerous dogs um, give. I think we need to look again at what we do to protect people while, of course, supporting the vast majority of responsible dog owners. Principally, this is an issue of enforcement. I'm not sure that yet another form of licensing is going to make any difference. After all, we all know that the good guys buy their licenses and the bad people don't bother. So it is an issue of enforcement, and I hope that the government will want to look at this issue and bring forward measures so that we can see how we can toughen penalties and crack down on people who are consistently flouting the law. I fully support the measures that have been set out by the government to increase energy efficiency. In particular, the Green Deal will make a big contribution to reducing carbon emissions across the UK. 
but will also bring direct benefits to householders. And this is something which people have raised with me on doorsteps quite often. They are worried about their fuel bills, and they can see this as a way that will end up by paying for itself through savings from energy bills and allowing lower gas and electricity bills in the future. So it really does provide a double bonus. Let me end by saying that I am proud to be standing here representing Ealing Central and Acton. And I shall be looking forward to speaking out on behalf of my constituents whenever the occasion arises. Yeah. Yeah.